Your safety and the safety of your travelling companions are of paramount importance when paddling the Great Glen. This chapter will provide a few pointers to help you, especially how you can help yourselves if you do run into trouble on the water. Please remember, canoeing the Great Glen on your own should only be considered by experienced paddlers. This chapter is brought to you by two of the best paddlers in the business, Nancy Chambers and Dave Rossiter. Nancy is an instructor at Glenmore Lodge and is a BCU Level 5 canoeist with over 20 years paddle sport coaching experience. Nancy is a peak UK team member. Dave of Standing Waves has been paddling for longer than he can remember. Dave is a BCU national trainer, Level 5 coach and part of the Palm Equipment and Piranha Kayak team. Now check out the safety chapter. So there are many reasons that people capsize. Often it's due to getting caught out by a, a, a freak gust of wind or by a wave that's just caught you. Or it could be just that you're taking a picture and you've just overbalanced or someone's just giving you a wee, a wee shout to, to call your name and you've just overbalanced. So there are many reasons. If, uh, if you are caught out, then a good support stroke will uh, usually see you right. And if you have the skills, an uh, Eskimo roll would be very good as well. So if somebody has had a capsize, then we would look into hold on onto the craft um, and then don't panic. But definitely look to try and get attention from somebody via whistle, um, their phone, big arms, kind of waving around, a big shouting to be able to help get, get, get attention. We've just seen a canoe capsizing and the couple in it have just righted the boat, they put their paddles into the boat and then swam into shore uh, using their painter. The decision to swim to shore would be based on how comfortable they are in the environment but because the boat's quite unsteady, it's got lots of water in it, it's quite full of kit, then the ability just to grab the painter and go is, is much a safer option for people usually. We've just done a rescue where a tandem boat have been accompanied by a solo boat and the tandem boat capsized. The solo boat came alongside and then the solo paddler pulled the boat across them, getting the water out, tipped it up the right way and then get, got the, the two tandem paddlers back into the boat. It's definitely something that everybody should be able to achieve, uh, something that they could go and get further training in, but definitely something that people can achieve, that the manoeuvre, the X-Rescue, something to, for everybody to get some training in, yet. Yeah. So the other rescue we've just seen is called the Scoop Rescue, which is where we right the boat at the same time as we bring the paddlers back into the boat. It means the boat's still swamped with water, however by keeping the, the boats together, rafting them up allows us to be moving towards safety as quick as we can with a nice stable platform. It also means the swimmers are out the water ASAP, which is often a good thing for us at this time of year. It's best if they're close to shore um, because it's quite an unstable platform, but if you've got the, the boats reasonably firmly tied together then um, you are stable enough if you're doing it further out. So the first capsize we saw, the person uh, did absolutely perfect and put their paddle into the boat, uh, kept a hold of their boat and then swam to the shore. The second capsize, the person lost their boat and then you could see the wind pulling the, the boat away and it drifted quite quickly out of, uh, out of reach and they couldn't get to it so they've lost their boat. Uh, we recommend that people stick with the kayak just to make sure that they can always be seen. Um, it gives them that extra flotation, that extra buoyancy, so if somebody does have to come and look for them, they're going to be much, much easier to be seen. We've just seen an Eskimo roll, which is a brilliant self-rescue for the kayaker to have. It avoids all that needing to come out of the boat, swim to the side. It means that the, the session can continue, your trip can continue really easily, so yeah, brilliant skill to have the Eskimo roll. So Sea Kayak Rescue, where we've taken the, 
capsized swimmer, we've taken the boat over ours and emptied the water out of it. Um, and we've had the rest of the team rafted up. That rafted up allows them to stay together. They do drift away from the rescue where it's happening, but they do stay together um, to look after themselves. So if you're rafting together, it's usually because it's bouncy water or very windy conditions and people are getting a little bit nervous. So it's really good for them to, to have some moral support and some physical support from the people beside them. So the second one we did was the same type of rescue where we emptied the water out of the capsized boat. But this time we had the rest of the team, we had them just staying really close to the action. That allows us then to make sure as if I'm a leader there, it allows me to make sure that I've got all my team with me. When we're ready to go, we all go. The team need to make a team decision. Who's going to be a leader? That's often the most experienced person. That might be the person who's done lots of the foundation safety training, so they've learned how to do a lot of these rescues. But before going afloat, the team has to have a plan, definitely. So there's a number of clubs that you can go along to, you'll be able to get details from the Scottish Canoe Association and they will all probably have pool sessions in the winter time, you can go along there and, and learn to roll there and they will, um, they will teach you how to roll, how to come back up, how to do all the support strokes that we were chatting about earlier as well and there's a number of other organisations that, uh, such as Glenmore Lodge that will have uh, rolling courses on and you'll be able to learn there as well.